Hello everyone and welcome back to Stage Manager Supply Co. My name is Claire and today we're going to be talking about one of the first documents that you'll need to create during a production process, a contact sheet. Before we get started, I would just like to say that Black Lives Matter and that I am creating this content on the traditional lands of the Kickapoo, Peoria, Potawatomi, Miami, and Sioux tribes. As we always start our videos, we need to take a moment to acknowledge the completely inequitable and devastating landscape and history of the United States. We are a country built on stolen land and developed on the backs of slaves. Stage Manager Supply Co. is my own attempt to bridge generations of racism and oppression by making stage management arts education much more accessible. Today, specifically, I would like to highlight the Loveland Foundation. The Loveland Foundation is an amazing organization that focuses on bringing opportunities to communities of color. One of their foundational goals is to help provide therapy support services to Black women and girls. If you have the mental or economic currency to signal boost and support this amazing organization, I will leave the website link to the Loveland Foundation in the description of this video. Speaking of economic currency, I strongly believe that arts education should not just be for people who can afford it. This channel was created to give you all the tools you need to create your own stage management vault. Additionally, if you would like to support the ACLU and my channel, you can purchase all of the documents that we are going to create today on my Etsy shop, which I will link in the description below. 50% of all proceeds from my Etsy shop get donated directly to the ACLU, and the remaining profits are used to recoup production costs. Either way you choose to create this contact sheet with me, you'll end with the same result. Third, this is my own personal style that I use to set up my contact sheet. What I adore about stage management is that we are all able to have our unique styles and perspectives on what we think a document should look like. My style is an amalgamation of styles I've picked up from mentors and peers along the way. So if there's anything that you like in this video, feel free to use in your own contact sheet. If you like to set up your documents in a different way or have other tips and tricks that I may have missed, please sound off in the comments below so that we can grow our stage management hive mind. With all that being said, let's get into building a contact sheet. first program that we're going to use to build our contact sheet is Microsoft Word. I enjoy using uh, Microsoft Word tables when I create my contact sheet to keep all of the information neat and in line. Let's get started by opening up our show folder. Then we'll create a new folder and name it contacts. After we've created our contacts folder, I'm going to go into my templates folder and copy and paste my Word document template into my contacts folder. If you haven't already checked out my video about base document template setup, I will link that in the description box below, and I highly recommend you stop here and watch that video. Everything we'll be doing in this series on my channel will be foundationally based in that video. Once you've pasted your Word template document into your context folder, we're going to retitle our document. I'm going to right click onto the title and rename it. SMSCO, which is the show code of my one woman production of August Osage County. Then, if you enjoy using versions in your document titles, you can add a V and either put your letter or number following the V. A small aside on versions, I enjoy using versions to kind of keep a running record throughout my production process of who was on the show, what my calendars looked like at that time, when certain things were added or retracted from a document. Until I distribute a document for the first time, I enjoy keeping my titles V prelim, as everyone on my team then knows this has not been distributed yet and it is changing like wild. Then, right before I'm ready to PDF or print or distribute a document, I'll change the version to version A so that everyone on my team knows I am sending this document out, it is out into the world. Then, when I'm ready to make changes after the first round of corrections or revisions has come in for a document, I'll copy the actual Word file and create 
version B of my file. Our next step is to enter into the document and change our header and footer accordingly. In the header, I'll change the title to Contact Sheet and I'll change my subtitle to V Prelim. Then I'll go down into my footer and make sure everything still looks good there. Since I'm creating a contact sheet and I want maximum space for people's contact information, I'm going to change my margins to narrow. I'll accomplish this by selecting Layout, Margins, Narrow. As you can see, once I selected narrow margins, my header and my footers tables got completely out of whack. I can adjust this by clicking into the header, selecting the edge of the far right cell, and clicking and dragging to the edge of the page. Then I'll go down into the footer and do the same process. Before we determine what size table we can include in our document, we need to determine how many columns of information that we're going to be using in the contact sheet. As a guideline, the main four columns of information that you'll see in a contact sheet are the name, the title, the phone number, and the email. You can include other columns of information for address, union affiliation, whatever you see fit. However many columns that you're planning though, that's how many columns you should insert of your table. So since we have four items, we're gonna insert a four column table. To insert a table with four columns, I'll select insert from the toolbar, then tables. Once my tables pop-up appears, I'll select a four column by as many row table as possible. Once again, we're going to focus on putting the content of the document into the table first, and then we will do some magic formatting to make the document look stunning. I have decided that I want to use the leftmost column of my contact sheet table for the name. The second from the left would be the title, the second from the right would be the phone number, and the far right column would be the email address. Another thing to keep in mind when you're creating a contact sheet is if you would like to divide your company members by department. Let's say for my one woman production of August Osage County that we're going to have four departments in the document. Creative, production, crew, and cast. This is an oversimplification of the many, many departments that can be on a production process, but for our purposes, we're going to keep it simple. In the first row of my table, I'm going to write the word creative, and then I'll leave the entire rest of the row blank. Another quick tip that I would like to mention is that you should always be thinking about the order of which you are billing people on your contact sheet. I enjoy putting the creative team, the director, the playwright, the book, the music, the lyrics, all of those creative individuals at the very top of a contact sheet, followed by your designers, followed by your production team, stage management team, cast, crew, musicians. This is very subjective to personal preference or your producing organization of their own standards and methods. So as I've said many times before, find your go-to person and check in on if there are guidelines you should be following when it comes to all things billing. So I've already whipped up a quick list of people that I know are going to be in our production. So I'm going to copy and paste their information over into this table. But now I see I only have one more row left in my table. I'm going to add more rows to my table so that I can include more company members on this document. I can accomplish this by clicking into my last row, selecting the table layout option from the toolbar, and then selecting the green add below. A question that I get asked quite often is where do you find the actual contact information for the people who are going to be on your contact sheet? This is a great question for possibly the person who hired you onto the project to give you some guidance on who to go to next. This person could be the company manager, the general manager, the artistic director, the producer. It all depends on your process and your company's hierarchy. I also ask if a company would prefer that I maintain a document of their own creation or if they don't mind me using my own contact sheet, which we're creating right now. I'm going to go ahead and add in my remaining three departments and all my other names and titles and roles.
Now that I've entered all of the contact information for each company member that I'm aware of, I see that I have some extra rows at the bottom of my table. I can get rid of these extra rows by highlighting all of the rows that you would like to delete and then tapping the backspace button. Now it's time to do some formatting. The first thing I want to accomplish is that I want my department names to be one long cell across the entire table. I can accomplish this by scrolling up to my top row, selecting my entire first row, all four cells, selecting the table layout button from the toolbar, and then selecting the merge button. I'll repeat this process on the remaining three department titles. Then I'm going to bold each department name and highlight each department row a gray color to differentiate its row from the rest of the company. Once I have shaded and bolded each department title, then I'm going to do a little zhuzhing for column width. I can adjust that by clicking and dragging the actual column itself. Because this is an example document and I don't have longer names, titles, or emails for everyone, I'll leave the document here after I've judged the phone column. However, my general rule of thumb when editing a contact sheet is trying to get each person's contact info on one line each. I let this rule of thumb dictate font sizing, column width, what have you. But all of this is subjective. If it fits, it fits. A quick tip if you have a really pesky cell that's kind of ruining your whole document and you just want to adjust to that one cell, I will highlight the cell and the cell immediately next to it, and then I'll adjust the column border between those two cells only. So now I have a great looking contact sheet. I'm ready to go into the header and change the version to A. Then I'll exit out of the header, save the document, quit Word completely, then I'll open up our Stage Manager Supply Co. folder again, go into my Contacts folder, and change the name of the actual document from V Prelim to VA. Then I'll open up the document and save it as a PDF in one of two ways. The first option for saving as a PDF is selecting File, Save As, and then down into the drop-down menu, you can select PDF as your file format. The second option for saving as a PDF is selecting File, Print, and then on the Print screen pop-up, going to the bottom left-hand corner, selecting the PDF drop-down icon, and then selecting Save as PDF. Either way that you get to the Save screen, you want to make sure that your document has the correct show code, contact sheet, and then your correct version letter or number. Once all of that is taken care of, you can hit Save. Now you can send your document out into the world and wait for the inevitable revisions to come. Now let's try making the exact same document that we made in Word and Excel. I'm going to move through Excel a little more quickly because we already know what we need to put in the document, it's just how we format the document that will change in Excel. Our first step, as we did with Word, is to go into our templates folder, make a copy of the Excel template, and paste the copy into the contacts folder. Once we have the document into the contacts folder, we're going to rename it the same SMSCO contact sheet v prelim. Then I'm going to open up the document in Excel. Once I'm in the actual document, I'm going to first adjust my margins to narrow. Once I've adjusted the margins, I see that the document first row of cells is now on top of the header. I can adjust this by going over to the ruler and clicking and dragging the first cell down. Now that the cells are off the header, I'm going to double check that the footer is okay. The footer looks good. Since we have no content in the actual document yet, the page numbers haven't updated, which is totally normal. Now I'm going to change my uh, document title and my document subtitle, and now our document is looking good. Hello everyone, Claire from the future here. Um, as I have been editing this video, I see that I titled the Excel document Contact Sh Seat. That's really fun for me. Um, I would recommend that you title your documents in proper English or whatever language that you are speaking in creating your documents in. Um, and I goofed pretty bad. So um, enjoy the rest of the video and I'm sorry. <laughs> 
The next step that I'm gonna do is adjust my first four columns in the document to span the width of the entire page. Because we already centered the document horizontally on the page, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, go refer to the Excel section of my templates video. The document will auto adjust once we resize our four columns. I'm going to readjust the column sizes by holding down the shift key, selecting column A through column D, and then clicking and dragging to my preferred column width. Now I'm going to copy and paste all of the content that we put into our Word document into the Excel sheet. In our previous document, we had bolded all of the department names. We had merged department titles into one cell across the entire document. After I've merged, I'm going to left justify all of my department names. Then I'll make each department row a light gray color. And then finally, in my tables, I had black borders around each cell. I can accomplish this in Excel by clicking and selecting all of my active cells in my document. Then I'll go up to my home tab in the font section, select the border icon, and select all borders. Once all of the content in your document is looking good, and you're about ready to send the document out into the world, we're going to change the version in our header to version A, double check that our footer looks good, which it does, and then use file save as or file print to PDF your document. Finally, I'll save the document, close out of the document, rename the document in my contact sheet folder, version A, and then I'll email the document out into the World Wide Web. Congratulations! Now you have both a Word and Excel template to use as a contact sheet on all of your future productions. Having a really solid contact sheet template in your stage management vault is key to being able to start a contact sheet with confidence. If you have any questions about how I set these documents up or would like to share with me some of your tips and tricks of how you set up a contact sheet, please comment below and let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please feel free to click the like button, click the subscribe button, and click the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever I post more instructional videos and podcasts. Again, thank you so much for watching, and if you're interested in supporting or signal boosting the Loveland Foundation, the link to their website is in the description of this video. Bye!